Hi guys, Dane here, and today I want to do a quick review of Space Ranger by Isaac Asimov. So, uh, I'll read you the blurb quickly, actually, because this gives you quite a lot of context. So, the first adventure in the odyssey of David Star Space Ranger. Alien forces have devised a cunning conspiracy to cripple the economy of Earth. Poisoning from a Martian colony and a flood of mass panic threaten the very survival of the planet. So, this was originally written under the pseudonym Paul French, there are six in the series, so the others are Pirates of the Asteroids, Oceans of Venus, The Big Sun of Mercury, The Moons of Jupiter, and The Rings of Saturn. For various reasons, I've already read The Rings of Saturn, which is the last one in that little list, but um, I think they work fairly well if you read them out of order. This one does make sense to start with just because it sets up the kind of... The legend of the Space Ranger, I suppose. So he starts off just being David Starr. And by the end of this, he becomes the Space Ranger. And he actually kind of helps to facilitate his own legend by... So to, you know when a character sort of tells stories about themselves in the third person? I'm trying to give another example of this. Maybe um, when, uh, when Aragorn is Strider, if he was talking about, you know, the legend of Aragorn being the son of, you know, the long line of whatever it was i can't remember off the top of my head i'm sorry but um it's that kind of thing where a character tells their own story to other characters and they don't necessarily put the two together i guess it'd be like um, um peter parker talking to somebody else about spider-man so in this book basically david Starr goes off to mars to investigate these big martian farms and there are lots of different theories about where this sort of this food poisoning is coming from including the fact that there may be martians spoiler alert there are martians and star actually meets them and it's them that really kind of tell him of this prophecy of him being the space ranger i suppose they also give him some sort of some equipment that could save his life and it's I quite like this bit, so basically he ends up in a Martian dust storm and the thing they give him can save his life, but they don't explicitly tell him that and so he realises that they've kind of equipped him with this thing and then left him to it with the knowledge that if he doesn't figure it out, he's obviously not the person that, you know, that they thought that he was, which I think is quite cool. I also like this underlying mystery of what is going on with the food because you can almost see that happening now. I mean, Asimov even writes at the beginning, actually. I'll read this bit out. He's got author's note. These stories were first published some time ago and the description of the surface of Mars and of his atmosphere and in accordance with ast astronomic beliefs of the period. Since then, however, astronomical knowledge of the inner solar system has advanced enormously because of the use of radar beams and of rockets. And so basically, uh, he explains why the science in this is no longer accurate, but why it was at the time that he wrote it. And I think it's interesting that some parts of it have really aged well. So, for example, the idea here of Mars being used to grow food to feed people on, the, on, on Earth. And we're going to need that soon unless, this is me getting on my vegan soapbox here, but unless people adopt a more plant-based diet, which requires less resources to, you know, to grow, then we, we're going to need more than one planet to grow enough meat to feed people, basically. And in this, actually, Mars is mainly growing uh, crops, but then, you know, you can feed crops to animals. So I just thought that was quite interesting. It made me think about our own kind of the quandary we're going to face within the next 30 to 50 years. I don't know exactly when this is set, but it feels as though it could be set within 20, 30 years of now almost, you know? Which is interesting because it was first published in 1952. One other thing I'll say as well, it's uh, only 145 pages long in this edition, so it's not a long read. You can get through it in one sitting if you want to. I read it in a, in a day, just dipping in and out of it. Really enjoyed it, and it also kept me going as well, you know, when a book just kind of grips you, and you just, I needed to know things. And it wasn't that, it, that chapters ended on cliffhangers or anything like that, but there was always something, the sense that something was going to come next. Um, and, and it did happen like that. There were lots of twists and turns throughout the way, that kind of classic you know, complication response thing of something happens to the character and then we learn more about the character through the way that they respond to it. And also just some of the side characters in this are great as well because again, it's set on this Martian farm. It's known for actually being one of the roughest of the Martian farms as well. And you can you can imagine the kind of person who'd be attracted to a job for 10 years living on Mars, growing crops in these inhospitable conditions, you know? So all in all, I actually gave this a five out of five. I really enjoyed it. I can't really think of any ways I would have improved it, to be honest. And now it's got me wanting to read the best, the rest of the uh, Space Ranger series as well. So 
hopefully uh, look out for some more of those soon. There we have it. That is my review of Space Ranger by Isaac Asimov slash Paul French. Let me know in the comments if you've read this book or any of the books in this series and if so what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.